As of the time of this recording, Forza Horizon 5 has been out for nearly three years. During that time, the Eliminator has gotten exactly one new car, the Nissan Tessuro, which was added as a second starter option a full two years after the game's release. But for many people, myself included, the Eliminator needs much more than that in order to keep this game mode fresh and exciting. Based on my experience and the feedback that I've gotten from the Eliminator community, I've compiled a list of 20 ways that the Eliminator can be improved in Forza Horizon 5, or if not in this game, then for Forza Horizon 6. I'll leave a link below to the Forza forum where I first posted these ideas. Please vote for this page, and if we get enough votes, hopefully this will get the game developer's attention. If you have any other points to add, please leave them in the comments below. And Forza developers, if you're watching this, please consider implementing some of these changes. Thank you in advance. This video will be in two parts. Part 1 will detail changes that could be made to the current Eliminator game mode, and part 2 is a list of some entirely new game modes that could be built around the Eliminator. Let's start with part 1 first. New Cars we desperately need new cars. This change is the most obvious and would also make the biggest immediate impact on the Eliminator. As previously mentioned, we've only gotten one new car in two years and that's just too little, too late. Forza developers, please consider having a rolling roster of new cars added on a consistent basis, whether that's every month, every quarter, etc. Start by replacing about 50% of the current Eliminator roster with new cars, and then on the next update, replace the remaining 50%. It would be great to get a completely new roster, but even if we get a 50% new fleet every update, that'd be a great improvement. That leads me to point number two, which is more cars per level. Right now, apart from level 1, there are 5 cars per level in Forza Horizon 5 and it's not uncommon to drive the same level 5 car or the same level 10 car multiple games in a row. In Forza Horizon 4, we got 6 to 7 cars per level and even that was not too many. Consider adding 10 cars per level and if you really want to go all out, please give us 10 different level 1 cars as well. More variety of car types. Currently, the game has more than 30 different types of cars, everything from drift cars to muscle cars hypercars, rally monsters, vans, and much more. Imagine what the game would look like if the Eliminator had some epic starter cars in there like these. Next, bring in some off-road monsters, and then add some epic track toys. Toss in some classics, and then top it off by adding a mixture of some strange cars as well. Cars like this would bring Eliminator players back over and over again, knowing that there's still cars they haven't driven yet, or cars they haven't won with yet, or just knowing that their favorite car is now in the Eliminator. More car manufacturer variety. Currently, 11 of the 47 cars in the Eliminator come from Ford. On the flip side, Nissan only has a single Eliminator car. Well, until they added the Tesuru. To maximize the variety, have a limit of no more than 2 cars per manufacturer allowed in the Eliminator at any given time. With almost 100 different manufacturers in the game, there's no shortage of options to choose from here. Add skins, wraps, and liveries for Eliminator cars. Have an Eliminator's car section in your garage where you can modify the appearance of each Eliminator car based on some default Eliminator themed skins and colors that we can choose from. Also, add exclusive car wraps, colors, and horns that are available only to those who have completed various Eliminator accolades and achievements. So you want that minion skin for your Isetta, or that baby shark livery for your Peel Trident? Sorry, you can't have it until you first beat a level 10 car with your level 1 starter car. You also can't have a purple car until you've won at least 100 Eliminator games, and gold skins would only be available to those with 1000 plus eliminations. Include a legendary car drop. This would be a level 11, super high performance Eliminator car which an airplane would drop into the game. Some car choices for this could be the Hennessy Venom GT, Pagani Wyra R, Koenigsegg Yesco, or the Razor Tachyon Speed. Let me know in the comments which car you'd want this to be. Everyone in game would be alerted to its arrival with a gold banner across the screen stating, Legendary Car Drop Imminent. A golden X on the minimap would show the location of the drop and everyone's race would cancel. This way everyone has a chance of getting to that car drop first. Also, the player that gets this car will always be visible to everyone else via a golden arrow on the minimap. This event would be rare and happen only once or twice every 24 hours. There should also be a very special airplane livery given to the player who wins the Eliminator with this car. Have flash car drops. These would be level 7 to 10 cars that would only appear for 60 seconds and then disappear if they're not taken. Just like with a legendary car drop, you get a notification alerting you that a flash drop is coming soon. An arrow on everyone's minimap will show the location of the drop once the car arrives. Have this happen maybe twice per match, it'll be a great way to get players together and that would lead to a lot more head-to-head -head races. Add mystery car drops. 
These would be car drops that are marked only with a question mark. You won't know what the car will be until you choose it. It could be a level 2 or even a level 10 car. You simply won't know until you pick it up. How about Daily Super Eliminator? This would be a 100 player eliminator match and the winner would get an exclusive prize available only to the winners of this game mode. There would be an in-game 24 hour countdown to the start of this match so players would know exactly when to expect it. Longer Final Showdowns Right now, an average final showdown is around 5 to 7 kilometers long and the finish line is marked by a single checkpoint. Often you only need to make a single mistake and that entirely ruins your chance at victory. So in order to really test the skill of the drivers, divide the entire final showdown into 4 different checkpoints with each checkpoint being 5 kilometers long. Once you reach checkpoint 1, checkpoint 2 becomes visible to you. The same goes for checkpoints 3 and 4. Make the checkpoints completely random so there is no manipulating the finish line location and the winner is the first player to reach the final checkpoint. Add an in-game leaderboard. Forza Horizon 4 has something like this, but Forza Horizon 5 does not. This leaderboard will display each driver's gamer tag, current car, number of eliminations, and current status. The board will be sorted by highest level cars at the top to lowest level cars at the bottom, or it could be ranked by having the players with the most eliminations at the top and players with the least at the bottom. Also, add the ability to report cheaters from here. Introduce a spectator mode. So I just got eliminated and want to see how the game ends. Will my opponent get eliminated as well or will he win the final showdown? This ability would allow me to watch each opponent's point of view after I'm out of the race. This would also be a great way to spot and deter cheaters. More players per match. It might mean slightly longer matchmaking times, but a 60 player lobby should be normal as opposed to being an absolute rarity. Maybe have an epic eliminator cutscene play during this longer load in time. No repeatable upgrade loop. Currently, if you upgrade to the Funko, your next upgrade choice would be the Lamborghini Centenario and vice versa. Have a different upgrade choice available after each win, even if you stayed in the same car all game. Have an Eliminator Final Showdown Podium. Other Forza races have a podium for the top 3 finishers, apply that to the Eliminator as well. Remember, sometimes it really is the little things that make a big difference. More transparent on-screen text. Words like Go and Final Showdown are too big, and not being able to see past them often leads to what could otherwise be an avoidable crash or a race loss. Instead of using bold, solid text, maybe just show the outline of the text instead, or just make the text size smaller or disappear quicker, just don't block the screen with it. Better Anti-Cheat If I have to travel on land to my destination while my opponent zips through the air at rocket speed, there's a problem. Teleporting, traveling across water, high speed erratic movement, it all needs to go. This is where having a spectator mode would also help gather evidence directly from a cheater's point of view and hopefully lead to far fewer cheaters in the game. More Eliminator Accolades This would be things like win 2, 3, or 4 consecutive Eliminator games, or eliminate 7, 8, or 9 players in a single game. Another suggestion would be eliminate everyone in a car 5, 6, or 7 levels higher than your own. For a really tough challenge, throw in a eliminate someone in a car 9 levels higher than your own. Yes, I would definitely go for it. Balance the cars. I'm looking at you Audi RS6. This is a level 2 sleeper with a higher top speed than many high level cars. This was a level 5 car in Forza Horizon 4 and you can easily beat a level 9 or 10 car with a proper setup with an RS6. The level of each car should be tied to the car's performance. If this was brought in as a sleeper as opposed to an oversight, there should be more sleeper cars than just this one. Adjust the timeout bar. If you are caught outside the arena for 10 seconds, you automatically get eliminated. Unlike the current setup, this would apply equally from the first arena to the last. Make the circle shrink slower so players still have time to get back in, but make the penalty more severe if you do get caught outside the arena. Once the final arena closes and the final showdown is about to begin, the penalty for leaving the arena even a second early is instant elimination. Alright, let's move on to part 2 and discuss some entirely new game modes that could be built around the eliminator, starting with hardcore mode. In this mode, all of the game assists are turned off. There's no braking or steering assist and no traction or stability control. Your skill or lack thereof is the only input the car is getting. Also, a simulation damage is turned on. There would be a damage bar which would fill up if you hit obstacles like cars, trees, houses, or rocks. Massive jumps would also affect it. As the bar fills up, the car's performance starts to slow down and visually the car looks like a wreck. Once the bar fills up completely, your car would be unable to move for a set amount of time or you would simply be eliminated for having too much damage. However, the damage would reset if you swap to another car. To make it even more challenging, there would be no map and no mini-map. 
You need to find your opponents by sight and sound alone. You also cannot choose your starting location. Everyone is spread out at a different designated starting location, but don't worry, it gets tougher. There's no card drops, so the only way to upgrade is by racing and eliminating other opponents. The map size is smaller, so you don't have long travel times with no other cars in sight. And speaking of sight, everyone is visible on the heads up display all the time, so there's no sitting in a corner somewhere and hiding from others. However, everyone does start with a level 5 car of their choice, so you can get straight into the action. And lastly, there is no final showdown. The game goes on until only one driver remains. Next up is team mode. There's two ways this could be done. The first option would be to put half the cars on team red and the other half on team blue. You can only race opponents from the other team and there is no final showdown. The first team to eliminate all the other team's drivers wins the game. The second option is called duos mode. You spawn in with your friend via convoy mode or something similar. But don't worry, if you didn't choose a teammate beforehand, the game will assign you one. Once either teammate challenges another opponent, the race is on. Both teams need to get to the same finish line, and the first team to get both cars across the finish line wins while the other team gets eliminated. Or, instead of eliminating both drivers from the losing team, only the last place driver will get eliminated, but his teammate is allowed to continue. This remaining player would have the option to buy back his teammate instead of upgrading his car the next time he wins a head-to-head. -head. However, if he loses his next race, that team is fully eliminated. Since this mode is all about teamwork, both team drivers need to be present in order to compete in the final showdown. If a teammate reaches the final showdown but his partner is eliminated, the remaining driver will also be eliminated at the start of the final showdown. This will put pressure on the remaining driver to win a head-to-head -head race so that he might bring back his eliminated teammate. And finally, the first team to get both drivers across the finish line in the final showdown are crowned the Eliminators. The third game mode is called Rush Mode. This is for players who don't have a lot of time to play or are simply looking for a quick match. Everything is accelerated, so the starting arena is smaller than normal and car drops are very plentiful. The final showdown starts 7 minutes after the game starts, and the first player across the finish line is the Eliminator. However, the stats for this game mode should be separate from the normal Eliminator statistics since it is a shorter round. Don't forget to vote on my post, and hopefully the developers will implement some of these ideas. Also, let me know your ideas down below, and which one of these ideas was your favorite.